coming to you live from downtown Detroit. This is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel O'Connor. This is a volatile fucking beer. Coming to you live from downtown Detroit. This is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel O'Connor. This is a volatile fucking beer. Coming to you live from downtown Detroit. This is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel O'Connor. Good morning, traders and investors. A little double music trick here on this Friday morning. Good morning, the day after Thanksgiving. This is Joel L. Condon here with Triple D, Dennis Dick. Spencer is on vacation in New Jersey. I'm sure he's listening in and uh, seeing how we're doing today. Uh, let's recap what we are going to talk about on the show today. And on the show today, uh, we're going to talk about Black Friday results, whether uh, people are out there shopping or not. Uh, stock futures slip as trade tensions returned after U.S. signs legislation uh, pro Hong Kong. And uh, Dennis and I will talk about how we're a little shocked that the market's not more in the red. Uh, tech data uh, gets another suitor or has a suitor. We'll talk about Warren Buffett being involved with that. Uh, um, Netflix at the box office, is it going to make a difference uh, with the stock um, as uh, they put out The Irishman? Did not see that this weekend, but I did see another good movie. A bunch of stocks going ex-dividend today. We talk about ex-dividend trading patterns and stocks before they go uh, you know, into their dividend. So there are a few of those on this Friday. Not much earnings to talk about, folks. Uh, quiet, quiet on the earnings front. Uh, a couple ratings changes, not really of any significance here, uh, but let's bring in uh, Triple D. Triple D, I gave that uh, that start to the show. Uh, B minus? Uh, yeah, you're being generous to yourself there, Joel. <laughs> there was a lot of music going on, but you know what? At least it started, so maybe we do give it B minus because we've been in situations where we don't can't get it started. So it's not always easy without your producer, but Joel did a pretty good job. Uh, the, the, the four times playing the intro was interesting, though. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. You know why? Because I had to share my computer sound, right? And then, but since I'm already I'm monitoring the YouTube page on this, I had to turn it off. It was, you, you were hearing it again through the YouTube. We got to get so. some gremlins, you know, because Spencer wants to feel, you know, like that. We can't do it perfectly without him. So we do that for you, Spencer, if you're listening. All right. Well, if you don't like the great, should we just try it again and just start from the top? No, no, it's good. We're going, we're going. And you know what? You look at this market here and late Friday night, um, no, I'm thinking it's Friday night because it feels like a Monday. Late Wednesday night, we had a, a headline break that it looks like the White House is backing the Hong Kong protesters. And we saw the S&P futures quickly fall 10 points on that headline. Um, I'm actually surprised. Like, this is very interesting here. You've got to think this is not going to make China happy. And if you're trying to do a deal with China, now you come in, you you know did some legisla legislation supporting the Hong Kong protesters. I think that probably puts a damper on any imminent trade deal, don't you? I mean, you would think so. I mean, so close... we're down like five or six handles, shrugging it off here now. But I mean, we've been rallying on deal, deal, deal. This is not going to lead to a deal, in my opinion. So if China says anything like no deal all of a sudden, we could be back in this deal, no deal cycle. So it makes me a bit nervous. If you're coming in here and buying it here this morning, I'm somewhat nervous. I mean, buy the dip has worked continuously here for the last month and a half. So I guess, you know, if you're just still playing that and just ignoring the headlines, you ignore the headlines. It would have worked Friday night, too, because we're already up five handles from the lows. But... That makes me nervous. I have four swing longs on right now, and I'm kind of nervous on them. Just, uh, you know, obviously the long-term investment portfolio I'm sticking with, my day trading portfolio I'm hedged. But with my swing trade longs, just been riding this wave higher, I just think there might be a reason now, actually, to be somewhat nervous. Because if China comes out and says no deal all of a sudden, I don't want to be in a situation where we fall 300 points in 30 seconds. Well, what we have here, let's just talk about the S and P's too and how they shape up. We hit we hit uh, thirty one fifty five right on the close, so that was Wednesday's high. You had your all time closing high right there at fifty three seventy five. They were able to get that in. They did just they were trading right at that level when the news broke. You could see the big red candle there that took us down, and uh, that is the fifteen minute chart. And what I just have to say 
is we got a great number to keep an eye on the downside, whether uh, anything happens with China deal or not. You had up, uh, you had Wednesday's low at 41.75. Your interday low was a little bit above that. Tuesday's closed right above that. So that whole area, let's call it 31.41.75. We are still seven handles away. That is the key to the downside for me. Uh, now on the upside, if we begin to rally, your daily pivots at 15 a quarter, but all you really have is that old time closing high at 53.75 and that old time high at 55. So I don't know if we're just going to wiggle between those two levels the entire day, uh, but you know, really interested to see how the market reacts at those levels if we reach them today. In this abbreviated trading session, folks, remember the market is only open till 1 p.m. Eastern. And remember, an after hours does go until 5, but just still remember that liquidity is often much lower on this day so it means sometimes if you get any breaking news you know and if i was china and i wanted to retaliate here for what was done i might say a no deal thing here this afternoon i'm not sure they're going to do that and obviously you know we, we don't know the ramifications here if they're just going to ignore this but i know an, a bloomberg article i read you know from two nights ago said china was furious about this so I just don't think a deal is imminent here. And if China says something like, you know, all talks off the table all of a sudden, it's, you got to be cautious. That's all I'm saying. I would, be, I would actually be cautious here uh, after that headline from Wednesday night. So I'm going to get a little bit more cautious with my stance on my trading as well. But, you know, we could trade the market that's given to us. We can trade the technicals, and that's what we have here. So we're trading down a little bit here. The, the dips have been bought. Um, yeah. And... You know, the earnings season was okay. We're at all-time highs as of Wednesday. So it's hard to get full-on, like, bearish here. But I'm just nervous that there's more headline risk today than there was two days ago after, you know, what, what, what the White House looks like they did on, on Wednesday night. Okay. So, all right. So let's do Jump in let's, individual issues. Yeah, let's do some individual issues here. And uh, I guess you almost had a really good trade. The, uh, yeah, was this the Wednesday tech data. Yeah, yeah, what happened with that? Uh, it broke. So it's 1742 and you could see it in the pro. Um, it, the, the news broke that they were getting an increased bid. And I actually was just not really paying attention. As you know, there was probably not a lot of traders I even at their desk. I just happened to come back down to my desk. I was gone from my desk for two hours, but I happened to come back because of the China. Uh, my, my buddy texted me and said, get back to your desk because the s and just fell 10 points. We got some action. So I'm trading that action. And then, you know, in the corner of my eye, I noticed, oh, tech data, you know, is getting, you know, another bid here or, or getting a, a better bid. Um, at first I read it and I just saw Apollo. And I was like, oh, that's old news. And I was like, oh, no, that's an increased bid. So then I went to grab the offer at 131 and a half, I think it was, or 131. And uh, I only got a little piece. And then it went 135, 138, 140. So you got to be quick on that stuff. Um, the algos were a little bit slow on it. So there was a chance for a human being to respond. Usually when you see a takeover in cash to a price, um, usually it's gone immediately, but because there were probably not a lot of algos running at that time, um, just because holiday trade, um, there right. was a chance for the human being on that one. So I got a little piece there. The little piece I got was excellent. The stock's obviously up 11%. Uh, I wish I would have got all, everything I was going for. <laughs> And somebody uh, beat me to it by a second. Bottom line. Well, no, actually, you said uh, well, good well, trader, we were, whoever you are out there. Good job. Somebody beat me by a second on that one. Uh, well, we were talking at the uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade. Did anybody watch the Detroit Thanksgiving Parade? Did they see the uh, they showed the Benzinga sign a couple times? I'm did not they? sure. Yeah, they did. Nice. They showed the large sign. But you, we were talking about this yesterday at the uh, at the party, and you said it was there for 26 seconds. Did, uh, you were looking it was at there for a long time. Yeah, you would never get this. So typically that's gone in a split second. It's just telling you there was a, wasn't a lot of high frequency trading algorithms, news readers running at 742 on a Wednesday holiday <laughs> trade night before Thanksgiving. So like I said, I wouldn't have even been at my desk. I'm normally at my desk, but I came back just because the S&P futures had moved significantly. So it's the only reason that I was at my desk. And, you know, maybe some other traders can get back to their desk. I have the luxury of, of being able to trade from home. So I just have to get down quickly to a basement turn on my system and start going there again. So don't think, you know, you're going to all of a sudden compete with the high frequency algos. That was kind of like a perfect storm that it was actually it's some stock available, first of all. And, you know, a lot of times there wasn't even anything in there. And then secondly, that the IHFT algos weren't all over it because there appears to be a, no news bots running uh, 18 minutes before the Thanksgiving Day holiday. 
Uh, Joe Dagger says he saw the Benzinga sign at the parade. So, uh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk before. Well, let's we talked to tech data. I mean, is there any any sympathy place with this? I mean, no, I, mean, I don't no, think so. No, because this was already taken over. It just what happens was and people might not understand why is this happened because the takeover was already done at 100. And, I think it was 131 or 132 dollars or maybe it was 130. I'm not even sure what the price was before if they raised it to 145 dollars. What often happens in a takeover is sometimes there's like a period where they can still talk with other companies and they apparently got another bid during those talks. So basically Apollo just came in and matched. Um, and rumor has it that this other bid, Joel, and you said you think you have confirmation on this, that it yeah, was Warren. Yeah. So it was Warren that was the other bidder. You have confirmation on that? I didn't yeah, it's a, yeah. well, it, it's all over the news. It's all over CNBC. It's not like okay. I spoke to Warren myself or anything. <laughs> well, we could go get we, Warren. We only speak on the weekends, Dennis. We don't speak during the week. So, uh, so he was going to, it looks like, but Warren got outbid by Apollo. So right, anyways, but... what's Apollo doing? I never looked at it, APO, because they obviously uh, had to pay an increased price, nothing. I mean, and this is, you know, still backed and they, and this is what their business is, is basically just buying other companies. So, I mean, obviously they're, they're running, you know, a huge hedge fund there and they've got a lot of their businesses as well, but you know, they, they're in the business of buying companies. So um, I'm not surprised this isn't getting smacked on it. I guess they're happy that they won the bid. It's, it hasn't even made a trade though. So. All right, let's uh, uh, let's kind of tie in like the uh, the Black Friday. But before we do that, uh, did anybody see Ford versus Ferrari over the weekend? I heard it was very good. I happened to see uh, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, um, the Mister Rogers movie. Uh, I won't give it away, but Lisa was it did good? cry. Lisa cried a few times. Was it? Was uh, that a kids movie? Uh yeah. Yeah, it is a kids. I mean, yeah, it is. Should uh, have taken my kids. Like uh, I mean, it's kind of there's some adult content, not real adult content, but that was a good movie at the box office. And uh, you know, they're talking about Netflix. I don't know if anybody saw the Irishman, uh, but uh, just going back to this Ford versus Ferrari, let's talk sure. Tesla here. And sure. uh, I think it's an, an important point here for Tesla uh, that not, that rally is really starting to cool off here. Uh, you got the truck a- is ugly. It's the truck ugly sell-off. I, s- I swear that's what it is. I, I mean, people say it was because of the broken windows. That truck is not going to get... And I know they said they got a bunch of orders and then the stock rallied the next day on it. They came right back in and fed that. And, you know, like we were saying on the show, we put that... And you were saying, you made that point, 100 bucks, throw down 100 bucks. And, you know, how many of these people threw down the 100 bucks maybe even before they saw the truck? So I can't, you know, I, the truck, I think, is an issue. I don't think they're going to be selling these things. You know, I don't think this is competing with the F-150. Um, I, I'm just not a fan of the truck at all. I was excited for this truck, and I was a potential buyer. I'm not joking. I was a potential buyer of the Tesla truck. I saw it after I saw it after two seconds. Like, never. I'm never buying that. So how many other people thought the same thing as me? This is one of their, you know, it's not like they have, you know, 100 different types of cars they're selling here. They've got four vehicles or what is it, four or five now? I mean, that could have been a huge source of revenue from them if that truck was pretty cool. And I think, you know, if it's you know, like the Army, it kind of looks cool. But may- maybe some people like it, but I think it's terrible looking. Uh, so I, gonna... I honestly, and I've said this, I think the stock's going to cool off for a bit. Yeah. Let's think about the 50% retracement of the overall move, like 250 to 350 Could come back down to 300 bucks. You'd still be in an uptrend. Could happen. I, I-, I don't like the chart. It's still, and, and you got the big old gap down there, too. If that's There's a lot of air. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons to think that, you know, this was a short squeeze for a bet. And now the shorts got a little bit more life here. The trend, the immediate trend is broken. If you draw the little purple crayon, Jeff Mackey, uh, immediate trend was broken that next day after the window smashing debacle. And then it gave you that nice rally, which we got right on the money. It was 345 that morning. And I was like, if I was long this, I'd be selling this. And obviously, and I actually thought about shorting it. And I wish I would have because you never would have taken any heat. And it's been straight down and down 14 points from there in two days. So I think, you know, if you are trying to call a bottom, you got to lean on that low, 327. It takes that 327 out, this thing's going to be under 320. So 327 is a critical number now for Tesla. All right. Uh, it is a minute past when I'm supposed to bring in Mark Chaikin of Chaikin Analytics. Uh, he joins our show usually on Thursdays. But he's t- kind enough to join us here uh, on, uh, I guess, a kind of day off here 
in the markets. I've just promoted you, Mr. Chaikin. Uh, do you have video today, Mark? He's still yeah. muted. Have you given him? You you promoted uh, him, so gotta, Mark's gonna have to him. unmute himself. I I unmuted him. Mark so, might have to unmute go. himself as well. There he I, is. I did see the Irishman, uh, Joel. And can you hear me? Yeah, we got you, Mark. We got you. We can't I, see you yet. You might I have to enable your video get, as well. Can't get the video to work on my Zoom. I don't know. Okay, why. that's fine. Oh, here, start my video. Okay. There so you go. Hey, there he is. Hey, there he is. Now you got to tilt your camera down. Spencer We're being really Vaughan, picky about you because I only see your books. But <laughs> I did see the video. You know, I had been bearish on Netflix. This is, I watched it on Netflix, by the way. My wife had seen it in the screen. It is a killer movie, three and a half hours. But apropos of it's 816, Jimmy Hoffa hated when people were late. Detroit <laughs> native. He, he would basically put out a hit on you if you came late to a meeting. So just be aware of that. Yeah, supposedly the last restaurant that he's seen is uh, in my neighborhood. Uh, the the Marcus Red Fox is uh, supposedly he was picked up like in, one of his associates and uh, never movie. to be seen again. I hear he's part of Giant Stadium. I don't know if that's ever been um, confirmed or denied either. Um, but uh, That one, I think, is uh, urban legend. But yes, uh, the Fox was featured in the movie prominently right toward the end. So here we go. Well, let's just talk about Netflix here. Uh, belt, jump, bumping up against some resistance here at, at 316, kind of a rally. You got the gap area ahead. Uh, can't deny it's had a 55, 60 point rally since the uh, middle of September. Uh, anything uh, changed in the chicken analytics? Not really. The power gauge has gone neutral because it's gone up above its long term trend line. I just think this is a stock that. Some people are going to make money in and it's going to be painful because very tough to hold the rallies when they see the uh, subscriber numbers and they're weak Then all these good movies fall by the wayside. So it's just not a stock I want to make money in. I've always said on Wall Street, there are some stocks you want to let someone else make money in. So Tesla and Netflix fall into that category. I'd much rather be looking for downside opportunities there. I just worry about content, and I've been, you know, I was right about this one for a while. I got bearish probably back in the summer when the stock was around 320, and I stayed bearish. I went down to 250. I look like a genius. It's back up here at 320. I don't look as smart now. Uh, but, you know, I think this is a, I think this is a rally to be sold. I'm still going to say it. I worry about content going forward here as well. As you know, Disney's going to pull their content, and everybody's going to come out and compete here more. It's competition coming for them. The valuation is still nosebleed when you want to look at it from that level. And th if those subscriber numbers start to show a decline in growth, a significant decline in growth, I think this multiple contracts. And that's why I'm very worried just from a fundamental picture here, although the technicals are okay. Well, I think these stocks are trading shorts, uh, not investment shorts. I think there are very few investment shorts in life, uh, especially with the volatility and, and algos can do what you were talking about earlier, react to a news story. Right. So I think I think these are great trading shorts, but I think uh, Netflix, I'm not going to be looking to short it until it drops under 300. Waiting for a little bit of weakness. We're on the line with Mark Chaikin of Chaikin Analytics. Just uh, this, this break down the technicals and Tesla 2 here. Um, had an interesting talk uh, with a buddy over the weekend and... You know, he's, he just think that there's competition coming for Tesla. Uh, Ford uh, came out with their new vehicle. Uh, what if Ford comes out with two or three or four electric cars? I don't, I, you know, the competition is coming. And so I think overall, that's why I just don't think this is a, you know, four, six, eight hundred, twelve hundred dollars stock, because I think some of the European automakers are going to, you know, uh, come with competition. And I, I think it, Finally, uh, Ford is making a move in that area. Uh, that's our take on um, on Tesla. I know you're not a big fan of it. Any fundamental or technical comments on Tesla? No, I mean, it's been outperforming the market since October. You got to respect that. I don't like the stock for all the reasons you just said. And also the fact that they can't produce cars in volume without glitches. And uh, hey, it's a cult stock, and until something changes with Elon Musk, uh, it may get a bid at some point, you know, at a much lower price, somewhere uh, under 200. Maybe they run out of cash and they can't refinance. 
But you got guys like Jim Cramer who said on Wednesday that uh, he now realizes that they can raise two billion dollars just on a tweet, and it means that they'll get funded until uh, there's no more reason to fund them. Which would be that you know they've clearly demonstrated they can't make uh, people the profit. Real quickly, people ask about this NIO, which is uh, supposed to be a compete, I believe, a Chinese uh, company, and. That chart looks absolutely horrible. It looks like it's trying to get above 250 here. Uh, the only thing I, but uh, really, I remember the the top in this one was put when it was on 60 minutes. So I'm not sure where the company at is where it's earnings. I'm just looking at it technically speaking. Uh, 250 looks like you got a little room above that. Uh, Mark, it's uh, it's the end of the month here, and the end of the month, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, that doesn't. Uh, that doesn't happen very often here. Uh, abbreviated trading session. Uh, what are you looking at? End of the month, uh, going to cook the books up a little bit, take a little, show us a little bit more profits or add to the stocks that you wish you owned for the whole quarter. I'm going to take the opposite of Dennis's trade. Uh, I think the fact that the futures are down five, they were down 10, as you guys pointed out, that's a good thing. We start off with a little bit of pessimism, uh, Am I concerned about China? Maybe. Uh, de December 15th is the key day there when the new tariffs are supposed to go on from the US. Uh, but the market is pretty um, anesthetized to China right now. Sure, if we do put those tariffs on on the 15th, you'll see some downside volatility. I'm going with the seasonal patterns. You're up 20% coming into the third quarter, fourth quarter, you're up another 5% here in NASDAQ in November, about three plus percent in the S&P. You can't stop a runaway train, except it's going gradually. This is the melt up we were talking about. And uh, 3,200 is within reach. That was our upside target for the year. We get above 3,200 in early December. I'm gonna tell people to tighten up their stops and continue to buy the dips, but don't be afraid to take profits off the table, I think. Uh, hedge funds are underinvested going into year yep. end. I think the uh, weak groups, weak sectors like consumer staples and energy are, are going to have a hard time picking up a bid. There's going to be tax selling. This is a big year for the market. You see, that's the thing when so many pessimists are out there. You don't have people focusing on what's really happened. S&P up 25% for the year heading into December. So what are people going to do? Are they going to take their profits or are they going to take some losses to pair off against their profits? I think this is a classic bull market year where you get tax selling. So you don't want to bottom fish until much later in December. And even there, I'm reluctant. But I see stocks breaking down that some of the big pundits were talking about. I'll single out Clorox. Jim Cramer loved Clorox. Take a look at that chart. He just loved Clorox, had management on. They're doing everything right. Well, Consumer staples had their day and mm -hmm. it's not working. Procter & Gamble, Coke, Constellation Brands in the beverage section. These stocks are just not doing well. PepsiCo, even SD Lauder, which had been a huge stock. So I think it's clear, buy the dips in the stocks you like, home builders, aerospace, technology, and my favorite group, healthcare. We've been talking about Bristol Myers and CVS here for the last, I'd say, two months, and they continue to make new highs. These are great stocks. It's a good point you're making, and that's the same point that I've been making up until Wednesday night and why I've been bullish for a long time, and I'm still swing long here. I'm just nervous that we ticked off China with what we did Wednesday night with backing the protesters, and um, I'm just scared they could retaliate and say, all talks are off the table, and then we fall 300 points. So that's why I like put the caution in there. I'm not shorting this market, and because I never like shorting markets, making new all-time highs. We just made a new all-time high. We're five points off it. So it's hard to get full-on bearish here. But I'm just a little more nervous than I was, say, Wednesday morning, just because I think there's that potential that China could say something that could spook the market. But your nervousness is probably magnified. 10, that's why the futures are down fold. six. Yeah, that's I mean, why that's, so you got 10,000 traders thinking the same way you are. you got to yep. lean the other way in this one. I get yep. the nervousness. But take a bigger picture. Trump yep. is heading into impeachment hearings. He's heading into a re-election cycle. What does he 
most interested in the economy and the stock market particularly. I don't think he's going to put on tariffs to play Mr. Tough Guy heading into those impeachment hearings. His ratings will just go down the tubes. The impeachment number will go up. He's going to try and make a deal with China. I think this Hong Kong thing is an aberration. And who knows? He could change his mind. How many times has the president changed his mind in a, in a one-week cycle on anything? <laughs> in a one-day cycle, Mark. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, stay with the program, uh, Dennis. Yeah. You're gonna, this is, All right. I'm, I, Mark's talking me back into keeping all my swing-alongs on. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll, I, uh, I wanted to go neutral on the swing trades, but he's talking me into holding on to them. <laughs> well, I have a slightly longer time framework than you do. I'm, I'm talking yeah. two to four weeks. So yeah. uh, from a two to four week basis, I think there are some really good opportunities here. And um, let's see how it plays out. But I'm looking for a strong market into year and they get above 3200, as I said, which has been our long standing upper range target. And I'll get a tiny bit cautious, but I'm not going to turn bearish on this market. Uh, let's make a couple comments on uh, Home Depot. Uh, took a little hit after its uh, earnings report. Put in, uh, put in a nice low there. It had the old take out the previous day's low at uh, 1781, went to 1688, closed above that low from the earnings day, and now you're back up trading in near 223. Uh, what do you think? You think this is going to get a little round, go back up? take out those all-time highs here a little more work to do on the downside for home depot a lot more work to do on the downside money's coming out of it you got to get above 230 which is our long-term trend line uh i suppose that's possible but for uh, home depot to rally that four and a half percent the market would have to be up about five five or six percent i don't see that happening right now and there's been some put buying at home depot so, uh, you know, some pros are betting against it here. Stock was great, had a run, sort of like the solar stocks. Took a fair-sized hit. Money's coming out of it. Money was coming out of it into the print, by the way. Into that earnings report, the three weeks leading up to it in October, money was coming out of the stock. Chicken money flow was negative. So uh, it's a stock I'd avoid here. I'd avoid all retail. You know, what's interesting is, Retail typically rallied into the Thanksgiving weekend, then we got Black Friday, Cyber Monday, but was an underperformer between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, we didn't really get the rally this year. It was very mixed. I would avoid retail in here and you know, I'm more focused on the Coles and the Macy's of the world in terms of avoid, but Home Depot would fall into that category. All right, Mark, let's uh, let's also ask you about uh, some high flyers that uh, pulled back and getting back off the ground. Uh, Roku uh, left for dead at 100 bucks and uh, rally came back down near that area for earnings. Uh, any comments on the ho- uh, high flyer Roku back up near all time highs? You know, I, I finally get the Roku story. It's it's really software. It's not hardware and content, and that makes it a little more interesting. The power gauge underlying components are bearish, but you've got to respect uh, the money flow and and the relative strength. I think people view this as the alternative to Netflix. Uh, You're not basically going to get hammered on content. Uh, And I I understand the story a little better when I dived into it and saw that it really is more of a software facilitator type play so uh if you want to go the relative strength route buy the dips i don't want to buy it up here i hate buying new highs uh stock hands is asking what do you make out of the yield spread uh narrowing short term talk about uh, short term just a short term uh aberration we've got a fed meeting coming up in december which will be nothing like last year's where they hammered the market I think the Fed is going to tell you the economy is good and they're going to stay the course. So um, you get a little bit of ebb and flow in the yield spread. But uh, t- if you want to know what the yield spread is likely to be doing, check, check home builders. Home builders making new highs. So that's telling you that you may see a little more narrowing in the yield spread. But what's interesting is even when the 10 year went from 140 to 180, uh, home builders had a small hiccup, but now you got DR Horton at new highs again. So 
Uh, I think all's well in the world. That doesn't mean we're without volatility. We will get some volatility, as I said, mid-month as we head into that China uh, tariff deadline. But I, I've got to like the market here. I think I've been consistent. There was one patch back in October when I got a little bit cautious, but it's been full steam ahead since then. And uh, comments on uh, the financials here, the XLF looking good. Bank America on the verge here, trying to clear 3350. Uh, any comments on the financials? A little I like Bank up. America. We talked about it two weeks ago. Also like some of the regional banks, East West, Bank Corp. Uh, you know, if you poke around, you can find some regional banks that really look attractive and they're, they're underfollowed. So if you've got a, a bullish shaken power gauge rating and the stock's looking good technically, I think there's real opportunity in some of these stocks. But XLF, you got to understand, is so many different groups. It's insurance, it's brokerage, it's big banks, it's regional banks. I, I think you got to go to the industry group level to find the winners in financial. But I do like Bank of America. All right, uh, a few more for you here. Uh, Amazon, uh, nice bearish, in, yeah. bearish rating. Bearish, okay. Uh, the us. power gauge rating's been bearish for, I think, six weeks. Uh, no, it's been bearish since late uh, July at a price of about eighteen hundred. So it's rallied back to eighteen hundred, still underperforming the market. This is a make or break point for Amazon where it's, it's got to get above about 1825, but not my favorite stock. It, you know, at it some had point, a, they're going to control run. the world, and then what? It had what a three-day run into Black Friday. So, you know, you, there's no other reason this run, ran for three days. I mean, it ran 70 points ahead of Black Friday. Now you get the actual Black Friday, and obviously we're going to get some data here this afternoon. But, I mean, a lot of probably high expectations is priced in from the last three days here. So I'm not surprised down a couple of dollars here on Black Friday. I always talk about the event run up and some people are pointing out, you know, potentially that it's down two bucks a day. I mean, it ran up 70 points in three days. So you yeah, had an yeah. event run up on the Black Friday for Amazon. Here. And now a lot of times those event run ups are to be sold. And I think that 1850 up there is like huge overhead supply. So even if you're coming and buying it now, you maybe get 30 points upside, but you just ran from 1750. I see like 70, 80 potential points of downside. So if you're buying it here now, I think you're late. So here's an interesting point of view. Everywhere you go, Thanksgiving dinner, you talk to people in New York and Connecticut and the rural areas, look at the Chaikin household here in Philadelphia. Everybody says they primarily buy on Amazon. Well, at the point in time that everybody's buying on Amazon, what's left? It's AWS. So uh, you may be in a situation where they control the world, but uh, there's nobody else left to, to goose up the numbers. And I, you know, I, I'm a big Amazon consumer. I buy everything. I just ordered a power booster for my Wi-Fi signal. Where did I buy it from? Bought it on Amazon. It could have gone to Best Buy. So I don't know what happens. Remember, about a year ago, Jeff Bezos had a meeting with the Amazon uh, employees and he said, just remember every company has its day in the sun and eventually there won't be an Amazon. I don't know quite what he meant by that, but you know, my take on it is everybody I talk to is using Amazon. So where's the growth going to come from? How about uh, one more and we'll let you go here. Uh, Mickey D's uh, had some problems after its uh, earnings report. Seems to be trying to find a bottom in here. Uh, talk about Mickey D's, the restaurant sector. Uh, has had a bearish power gauge rating since mid-October. The restaurant sector is actually fairly strong. So there are better names to be had in that sector. Let's see what we can find. Uh, just There's a lot of money coming out of that stock. A lot, a lot, a lot of money coming out of the stock. Bloomin' Brands, BLMN. Making new all-time highs. All right. Do you have you have your uh, your stock of the year for 2020 yet, or are you, st are you still doing your research? Uh, boy, <laughs> tough one. Not, not thrown under the bus right now. <laughs> no, it's too early to to go out on that limb. 
Okay. We'll get Mark on one more time and it goes to stock of the year for next yeah, we'll yeah, we'll year. It's still the end of November. Has we anybody been... had a good stock of the year that you've no. had on? That's worth... You want to know what uh, my stock of the year at one point, and I don't think it was last year, I think it was the year before, was IBM with I thought this whole blockchain thing was going to happen. And I went long and you know, it was looking good. It ran from 150 to 170. So that's where I can look at. Was it last year? No, it was the year before. It was at the beginning of 2018 when the blockchain thing was so hot and the Bitcoin thing. And I was like, this could, you know, bring this back. This thing went under 150 and I got to like maybe like a March and I was like, I'm out of my stock of the year. I was like dead wrong. <laughs> Ended up being closing the year, you know, down at 100 bucks. So I couldn't have did worse on my stock of the year pick. I think I'm done doing stocks of the year for that reason. It's really tough. Buy and yeah. hold, you know, buy and prune works. Buy and hold is like uh, a tough game. Unless We've been on the Buffett. line with Mark Chaikin of Chaikin Analytics. Usually he joins our show on Thursdays, but due to the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, he joined us today. And thank you very much. Enjoy enjoy the weekend, and we'll get back with you uh, a week from Thursday. Yeah, this is great. Thanks very much, Joel. Dennis, be good. We will. Happy Thanksgiving, Mark. Yep, you too. Very, very quiet here in the S&P future. Still yeah. traded down five and a half here at 48 and a quarter. <laughs> Uh, above mid range on this, well, let's see here. Really mid range, we had ten point range. So really, that because uh, the um, this platform hasn't adjusted the actual high, the overnight high, which will be included in Wednesday session, is thirty one fifty five. Uh, they maybe they'll restart that once the nine thirty session starts. And pre market low was forty one seventy five. So right here, uh, fourteen point. Range is what we're looking at and trading smack dab in the middle here at 48 and a quarter. Uh, Dennis, uh, really not much to talk about on earnings, right? No one did. A very small company. We're going to get GameStop here. After, is that after the bell tonight, GameStop? I was on my radar. On a Friday? I have it on my calendar. I'm not sure if that's tonight or not on Friday night. It's usually there's nothing recording Friday night, so maybe I'm wrong about that. Okay. Um, I had it written down, but I'm starting to challenge that because it's a Friday night. Let me see I mean, uh, there's a few stocks X dividend. I wanted to talk about those. Some big names. Kellogg's is one. Goldman Sachs is one. Coca-Cola. So we had some stocks go X dividend. Obviously, sometimes you see the run-ups ahead and the weakness after. Sometimes it's the case. Those work better with AT&T and Verizon. I know Coke did run up, though, a little bit there. Um, again, I just want to make sure everybody's using the adjusted prices. So if you are on Coke, the adjusted closing price is 53.55 because it paid a 40 cent dividend. So don't think Coke is down 30 cents today is actually up 10 cents because it is X dividend. Goldman Sachs, in, in fact, is actually down $1.30 because the adjusted price is way down at 221.70 and it just ticked 220.40. I, although I don't think it's going to open that low. I do have a trading position on Goldman Sachs. Lockheed Martin went X dividend. Um, so I had a bunch of big names going X dividend there. So just you know, check your adjusted prices. Make sure you're trading off the right price. Uh, GameStop is not until December 10th. Okay. So I I have have it. Down, and uh, what Des is talking about there with the adjusted price, that's just the Friday's close minus what the dividend in. So that is the Wednesday took, close. Yeah. Yep, the, yeah. Wednesday. I'm close. getting confused too. It feels like Monday, Joel. Yeah, so I keep yeah. calling. Yeah. I call Wednesday's trade Friday. It's these days exactly. when you get a day off in the middle. This feels like a Monday. Right. So that those stocks pay out their dividend and then the people that uh, are involved in that just trying to get the dividend depend how long they've been in the stock moving up. Let's just look at the charts of uh, you said Coca-Cola uh, was one of them. So that had a nice little run up into the dividend. Bit, so, yep. Yep. So if you're buying a week or two out anticipation, listen, and folks, when we talk about this strategy, we're just not talking about people that are doing it overnight. There's definitely funds that are doing this, you know, dividend capture. They, yeah. A large There's part of their that assets just capture dividends. Goldman Sachs is probably a little trickier of an animal that did have a run into dividend, but same it's not a dividend play. Coke is more of a dividend play. Like you got a 3% dividend. Goldman Sachs is 2.27. Yeah. It's a dividend play, but it's, it's mostly a play, you know, on interest rates and obviously moving along with the financials more so than a pure dividend play. But a Coke is interesting because, Joel, you're making a good point. It did run up for it's ran a point in the ex-dividend day. So does that mean it could turn around and show some weakness here? And actually, I don't mind this trade. When I'm just looking at this from the short perspective. And Mark was just talking about it. I mean, it went from 56 down to 51. You just rallied back up to 54 here. So I guess, you know, it's a little through the 50% retracement, but 
Um, it's the kind of stock, if you do believe the bull market's going to continue, this is the kind of stock that usually doesn't participate and sometimes can actually have a negative correlation with the overall market. So I don't mind the, the short setup here. Maybe leaning on fri- on Fridays, on Wednesday's high, 54.10. <laughs> Obviously, you know, the ex-dividend date is in play, but it's trading up here a little bit in the pre-market. Maybe if you got in the higher 53s as a short, maybe you take a shot. I mean, not that Coke is ever a great short. You're not going to go make 10% on this or something. But, you know, if you're short term, sometimes there's some plays in these that these can fall a percent or two after the ex-dividend date. So typically, if you're playing ex-dividends, they show strength ahead of the ex-dividend date and weakness after. That's usually what happens. And obviously, you've got the dividend adjustment in there, which may look make it look more weak on the chart but you know even after you back that out i know at&t and verizon have been classic trades like this coke i've never traded it that much off the ex-dividend but i think there's a setup here that i don't mind it from the short side here yeah you got a couple different things going on here in coca-cola uh you have that recent all-time high just about at 56 dollars actually 55.92 you had your break just under 52 so four point move I uh, bump at 54, 54 has been resistance. Uh, so November 4th high, you snuck above it a little bit on Wednesday, but not a lot. So I don't know if the size is going to re uh, reload there at 54, but uh, a couple different things here, a little bit of a, uh, perhaps swing trade short here for Coca-Cola. Uh, let's leave. Let's um, also ask, getting asked about square. And Square has been talked about, has moved up on the show, or not on the show, it's moved up on its own. Yeah. Hmm. Getting into the top. Yeah. I I don't have the book open, JV Spec, if you want to open your book. I bet there's some size at 70. It's just such a big psychological number. It hasn't been there in three and a half months. I bet there's some size at 70. And without uh, even looking at the book, it's just a typical level that some institution is probably going to use. So I'm going to try to open my book. JV Speck, if your book is open, just let me know if there's anything at 70. Uh, we closed uh, this area after the big drop in August. Uh, we went from 80, 98 close to 69.60. Uh, the fell another $5 the following day. Uh, the high of that earnings day, that earnings day gap, if you're looking for another uh, ticket, another target on the upside, 70.81 was your high. You got a big old gap between 78, 70, 81 and 82. Uh, getting some uh, request here for box. Before and- we leave, JV expected to confirm there's 120,000 shares offered at 70. So I was just guessing that there would be some size there and there is. So, you know, that's just knowing, you know, the big psychological whole number levels do come into play. Stock got up to 69, 73. I mean, if you're in it for a swing long here, I think this might be the time to lighten up. Takes out 70, then it can start moving again. But 70 is going to be a big level for this stock there. I am long it in the long-term account. I plan on sticking with it because I believe in the long-term story here. And I've always said I believe it can also grow grow into the valuation as well. Um, It's been a good one so far. uh, But as a trade here... It's been a nice run here for Square, and I'd say 70 is a big, a big test for it. Yeah, get into that, get into that gap area. Uh, just a uh, box. I uh, had a nice day off earnings on Wednesday. You see, that was wow. a big move for it. Wow. Yeah. And you get to continue. We're 16 a couple of days ago, almost 19 yesterday, 1880 high. Uh, I think I just to really get another leg up here. Wow, there's an 1885 high. So you want to see this thing bust through 19 today and settle above 19. And I think it'd be a, a set of stage for another move higher uh, from a retracement standpoint. You went what from 25 to what was that low? Uh, the 25 to the, about a 12 point move. 19 brings you back at that 50% area too. So important coming all the way back there on box you want to see it uh, carry through 19 close above 19 start to move higher That's people are uh, wondering why the alibaba volume is higher remember it has a hong kong or uh, i believe it's hong kong listing there now um that's open and so obviously you've got the arbitrage wow. going on now so where you didn't have that before you only had the u.s listing before so now that it's got the double listing there now you can have arbitrage going on between and obviously it's been trading actively over there overnight so that's why you can see a lot more volume here in Alibaba. And also remember, it's retail. So it's going to have more volume today, too, because and we've got Black Friday here. And I, you know, not that it's you know, huge maybe over in China, but at the same time, I think you know, this is probably a retail play. And 
people are thinking retail stocks maybe today. All right. Uh, I'm trying to see. Are you seeing any? Um, they're asking about BX Blackstone. Um, am I seeing any news on this? No, uh, that, I don't think no. there's any news. It's up no. 16 cents. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Anything. The only thing to say here is uh, old time high is up fifty five seventeen. Made that in September. Uh, one previous day's high to contend with fifty fifty four forty seven. Uh, you came real close to that yesterday. So nice run up, nice three days. You want to see it get to that old time high, of course, and close above that level, 847. Spoos are getting a little bit of a bounce here. Haven't really moved too much uh, quiet. Too much movement. I think this is like one of the least movement uh, that we've Been seen. Quiet. Yeah, in the index, uh, is there some issues? Should we go to see if we got any issues from the chat? Uh, to take a look at um, ISRG. Dennis, do you trade that one much? Um, do surgical? I do sometimes, but it's usually a buck and a half wide, so it makes it harder to trade. So it, it, it's wide, it's widespread. It's been moving. It's one of the biggest components of the bots, too. I own BOT Zebra, so I have indirect exposure to ISRG. I think it might be over 10% of it. Um, so you can see if you bring up the bots chart on a BOT Zebra, it obviously looks similar there. So stock's been going. I mean, this has been a nice run here for the last month and a half from 500 to 600. And all of a sudden, you know, you've got a stock banging up on all-time highs again. I mean, you take out 600 and she starts to go. I mean, this is a play that story, the story never really cooled off, you know, and this has been an unbelievable stock. You think about 2015, we're at $150, now we're 600. So, I mean, at a certain point, the valuation matters, but stock looks like it wants to go again. Uh, Jared's asking about what time do options settle today? He's asking about one fifteen. I, I think they'd probably be trading at 1 o'clock if you're trading your options positions. I don't know if the, the options that. themselves, I believe, close at 1 yeah. and along with the stocks. But remember, like I always say, you can do you know extended option exercise there. So don't think you're always safe if you close out of the money at 1 o'clock and you get a move after 1 o'clock. But like you're going to get maybe you're not going to get that on Thanksgiving. Um, you know, so it just depends. Like normally on options expiration Friday, like I said, if you're out of interactive brokers, it's 4.30, the cutoff time. So there's different cutoff times at different brokers for the end of the exercise. But I believe the options close themselves at one o'clock today. If I'm wrong right. about that, let me know. But I, they, they typically close when the stocks close. Uh, just when we were talking about robots and stuff, I pulled up uh, iRobot. And man, oh, man, the That's stock is... One. Not looking too good here. No, I have it? that, and this has been awful. So I put a half size position on in my long term portfolio at sixty. Big mistake, and I almost got out of it. I almost got out of it that one day after hours. I tried to, and then I just didn't get out of it in time. But, anyways, it's forty four dollars. The stock looks awful. Um, you get when some you lose some. This one's been a bad one. I had a long term portfolio. I thought I was getting cheap, you know. And I, that's why you know learn from my mistakes. You know what was I trying to do when I bought the thing at sixty? I was trying to call the bottom. And I, you, you typically, when you're trying to call bottoms and actually, you know, usually you're fighting the trend, you typically lose money. And that's exactly what I did wrong. I tried to fight the trend. I jumped in here and tried to be a hero, call the bottom. Oh, yeah, 60 is cheap enough. What's 44 here now? Yeah, valuation is still cheap. But, you know, is there growth there? I don't know. You know, I'd like they may have like a lawnmower product coming out eventually, but it's a vacuum cleaner. You know, it's a Roomba vacuum cleaner. And yeah, it bounces around. Yeah, they have some other things on the fire, but. It's uh, been a very disappointing stock. Uh, we get some comments here about Hasbro. Um, and it's turned. I mean, it's wow. This stock likes to gap around quite a bit. It's had a nice three yeah. or four days. I don't know. Kids still play with toys anymore. If you want a target here on the upside, 104.95. That was your high, on, I believe, on an earnings day. And... Uh, Gap to one nineteen forty, but uh, really easier, easier charge to read than this one, I'd say. Any comments yeah, on it's it? turned. I mean, we saw a lot of stocks that had been beat up turn three or four days ago. There, I, like I said, I was playing some of these, and some of these charts are nothing to do with each other, but they look similar. I mean, Etsy bottom out four or five days ago and starting to show some life here. So you're starting to see where you know that some of these stocks that have been beat up have started to uh, show life, where people are you know basically looking around what hasn't run yet. You know, we're at all-time highs. They're looking for stocks that haven't run. I've called the laggard starting to pick up steam. 
because you know had some stocks have been in the doghouse and you know those are the stocks that are starting to show life here now too as money managers are probably desperate they're trying to chase and they're saying what can i buy that hasn't run yet and um you know this is an example hasbro three days ago hadn't run yet now it's starting to move so you know at mattel i don't know mattel's interesting because it hasn't run yet mattel's always been the dog of the two Get, get if it got above 12 it'd start to get interesting there i mean it's not a bad setup on mat although i hate the fundamentals of it 1143 it's a low you can lean on that say if you picked up at 1160 or 1170 you only have a 25 cent you know where you're risking and if it got back up above 12 it could start to go again there's also potential on stock like that for a little squeeze so i don't mind the setup there on on mattel actually i actually as a trade would prefer mattel over hasbro just because i'm not chasing it but again mattel fundamentally don't put this on i think the price goes lower Long-term. yeah Question here about Expedia. Uh, that was whooped after its yeah. earnings report. Uh, gave you, I mean, you got an area to lean on if you want to, you know, pick it up here at 101 and a half. Uh, actually, 101.51, that was your close on Friday. You had a high at 101.99. Once you get over 101.99 was your high the day after the earnings report. You hit 102.16 yesterday. So, Stay, get above, stay above 102. Good for this stock. You just got to work your way into that big, big red bar. Uh, and I'm sure anybody that was caught up here in this big red bar is going to be looking to exit uh, Expedia. But uh, is coming off the lows of the move. So that's, uh, that chart is looking halfway decent. Can Ken wants to talk about pot stocks. Uh, they had their rally off that Bank of America. Gave some, I don't know, maybe, maybe just, the setups aren't bad on these now. Nope. I mean, if you want to get along these things and if you think there's going to be no tax loss selling and if you're a believer in the pot, I'm none of those things. I mean, you got a 50%. Look at the MJ. Let's just go take the ETF and, you know, that's going to encompass most of the main ones. So you went from 16 up to almost 19. So call that a three point run. We pulled back here with through the 50% retracement, 1722, 1727. But if you want to lean on that 17 uh, low there from Wednesday, I don't argue with you. So if you're buying it here at 1730 or 1740, um, I'd stop out below 17. That's the MJ. All the other ones are going to follow suit on that. I would stop out at the recent lows. If I'm buying CGC, I would not want to see it below 1762. If I'm buying a Fria, APHA, I would not want to see it trade below 438. If I was buying Aurora Cannabis, I would not want to see it trade below the, re- below the recent low. I believe it's 243. So, I mean, that's where my stopouts are on all the recent lows, whether those were Wednesday or Tuesday's lows. So they're, they're, they're okay. Like it's better than buying them, you know, chasing them three days ago when they just got silly. So you got to pull back on these things now. I'm just not a believer in, in the pot story. I think the valuations are still nosebleed. I think long-term they go lower, but the trade setups aren't bad here. Our buddy KP is asking about Snap and hmm. It's not too bad. I haven't looked at that chart in a while. Wow. Uh, Validation station. Yeah, this is quiet. Um, spent a lot of time between 13 and a half and 16, trading at 15.34 here. I guess what, what, I just can't get real excited about this one until it moves above 16. You had a high at 15.90. Uh, that was on Monday. You backed off to there. So old low in that area too. So I'd see see what happens. Get over 16, perhaps another leg up. But yeah, uh, I like trying. that. Yeah. Yep. Over I'd, 16, until... I'd start, I'd get interested. Yeah. But uh, it's over 16. I mean, and if you're buying it here now and you're saying, I think it's going up there, stop up below 15. So you're, you're clearly defined, you know, you're in a little range here, 15 to 16. Takes up the 15 low, then I'm nervous that there's more downside. Gets up over the 16 high, we could start be running. So that's how I play it too. Um, ASML for DC1. I don't know. I mean, the stock just key on the old time high. I see it trading up 231. ADR uh, too. So that's yeah, already price discovery has happened. Yeah. 276.23. If you're looking for a target, <clears throat> that's the old time high. Uh, if you're more interested in the old time closing high that comes in at 274.97, Juan Pablo Posada wants us to talk about PayPal. <clears throat> Probably should have talked about that when we talked about I, square. Yeah. 
It's run three days. Again, same story happened three days ago. They started to go around and what hasn't run yet? And they started buying it three days ago. You know, and this is the same reason that I came in and bought a stock like Twitter and I came in and bought a stock like Etsy. You know, if I would have saw the PayPal chart, I maybe be picked on it too. But it's the same reason. I was like, okay, what hasn't run yet? I did the same thing. And those stocks actually started to move. The first day they started to show some life. So the tell would have been the first green candle, um, you know, when the stock went from, uh, I'm looking on the 25th, when the stock went one, went up from 102 to 104.57. That was a tell that this was going to start to get some life here again. They're all trading the same way. All these like former Momo names that cooled off have started to show life three days ago. They're all going to continue to trade together. So it all depends on obviously, you know, the market continuing matters more than anything to these things. But if the market continues to run, there's room to 110 on this. How if about 108? 108 here. Uh, you hit that level on Friday with an 824 high, another high at uh, 846, another high just above 108 or just under at 107.80, getting a little bit of a running start of today. So that just that's been a key level since September. I like it above getting, like I said, getting a running start here, closing at 07.75. You want to see it stay green and uh, go bid here above 108. Uh, Dennis, about two minutes left here. Yeah. Uh, anything, uh, anything in balance land? It's uh, worth worth noting. Uh, yeah, there's some big ones out here. Um, they're mixed. I do see some buy imbalances. I see mostly sell square forty seven thousand to sell. General Electric or normal sell imbalance of two hundred thousand shares. I see Citigroup seventy thousand to sell. I got a trading position on that. Uh, Alibaba, 483,000 to sell. Again, remember, it's trading overseas, so that's going to impact the market there. Um, so um, it's not going to trade like it used to, where we just when we had the, the single listing, it was a lot more volatile you know, over here at the open. It's going to be more, the volatility is not going to be as much because it's already traded overseas and it's obviously active over there. Um, there yeah, it was 496,000 to sell, though. It's just significant as well. I do have a position on that, too. Um, Morgan Stanley, 62,000 to sell. I'm just looking at the financial they're down the TLT. Well, TLT is flat. I was wondering if the TLT was up just because I'm seeing more weakness in the banks. But, you know, it's quiet. It's going to be a quiet day. These days can go either way. Um, they sometimes are just, you know, nothing happening. Uh, and then some days, if you do get a headline, uh, then you can really see some major movement because the liquidity is lower. So if we stay, you know, free of headlines, free of Trump headlines, free of China headlines today, I expect nothing really going on if we get a china headline that breaks today there could be some major movement so just be careful uh real quickly for um what stock was it humana someone looking for a pullback in that uh, Boy, those things have been monsters. yeah you got a seller here at the 345 area uh you got a stuck above it twice on tuesday uh, monday and tuesday not quite on wednesday uh, 44 986 was your high close of 4194. So the longer this thing takes to get over and clear above 345, I'm not going to call it top in it yet. Uh, but that looks like an area certainly of uh, major resistance, three highs in the same way. And then on the downside, if you're trying to take some profits or, uh, you know, interested in the area to keep an eye on. Uh, your last two days lows are right within a nickel of each other, right at 341.36 and 41.41. You'll lose that, and uh, man, you got a, a drop to, let's just call it 336, and that's another good area of support in uh, Humana. All right, Dennis, well, we're going to wrap things up today here on Friday, November 29th, the last day of the month, uh, the day before the Michigan-Ohio State game on Saturday, uh, which we'll be uh, looking forward to attending. Hopefully Michigan can break that awful streak that we're on. Uh, Pre-market high is really 31.55. That's uh, your tick on Wednesday night. Pre-market low, 41.75. That coincides with your lows from Wednesday. So good areas to trade here, both on the upside and the downside. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back on Monday with Spencer.